Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, details about how Kennewick police tracked down a domestic violence suspect. And we are going to have an active start to the week with rain showers multiple days. I'll have that forecast. It's all coming up. From KPQ Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest, and thanks for starting your Monday off early with us. I'm Monica Petrozelli. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful weekend. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Kristen, you have a good weekend? Yes, not too bad. Just kind of sitting at home. We were talking, mm -hmm. I was mentioning we were trying to put this puzzle together. Oh. I feel like it's been taking us the last couple of weeks. It's a thousand piece puzzle, but it's... That sounds One hard. piece at a time. Perfect to do indoors, though. It is. It mm -hmm. is. And we have some active weather that's going to be moving in. So if you have anything indoors, maybe putting a puzzle together, maybe you have better luck than my <laughs> husband and I. But let's get you started first with that live look. Uh, this is from the Legend Sky Cam Network in downtown Yakima. And we have a mostly cloudy sky early this morning. I think the majority of the daytime hours today will just be cloudy. Now, visibilities are down. So we have some fog that has popped up around the Tri-Cities area this morning. Your visibility down to about two miles this morning. Five for Prosser, and then even reduced to about a half mile for the Cleella area and along the eastern slopes of the Cascades. Temperatures are still above freezing, so Tri Cities are at 35. We're right at that freezing mark, though, for Walla Walla at 32 and 38 degrees for Yakima. So again, just a lot of cloud cover moving through. I think the majority of the daytime hours today just staying mostly cloudy. 42 at lunchtime with a high of 44 later on this afternoon. So again, coming up, tracking that wet weather that is ahead for us. A look at your work week forecast, Monica. That's coming up. Thank you, Kristen. Well, a Walla Walla man is facing a murder charge after police say he shot his brother and his father. Police were called out Friday afternoon to a home on Stadium Drive where they found the suspect, 47-year-old Stephen Allen Taylor. His 72-year-old father and 43-year-old brother were also there with gunshot wounds. The father died on scene and the brother was taken to the hospital. Detectives and the street crimes unit are still investigating what happened. And police arrested a Kennewick man for domestic violence Saturday morning after he broke a restraining order. KPD says that 27-year-old Salvador Pantaleon Martinez was at a home in the 3200 block of West 9th Court just before 1.30 a.m. That's where he's accused of hitting the victim in the head multiple times before running away. Later that morning, police say Pantaleon Martinez went back and hit the victim again with a phone. Police say they were able to find him in a nearby home with suspected narcotics and he was arrested for domestic violence. Two Seattle police officers are under investigation. Seattle Interim Police Chief Adrian Diaz said the officers have been placed on administrative leave after going to Washington, D.C. last week when the mob of President Trump supporters stormed the Capitol. Diaz said that if the officers are found to have been involved in any crimes at the Capitol, they would be terminated immediately. The Office of Police Accountability is leading this investigation. Well, the new Healthy Washington reopening plan takes effect today. The Department of Health announced that all eight regions would stay in the first phase until at least January 18th, which is a week from today. Regions have to meet four COVID-19 metrics in order to move into phase two, which allows restaurants and fitness centers to open indoors at 25% capacity. The Department of Health plans to give updates each Friday on whether regions can or can't move forward. And after a long pandemic closure, a popular local restaurant is reopening for takeout this week. Cedars at Pier 1 announcing via Facebook they're planning to open January 13th, which is Wednesday. Hours will be 4 to 9. The restaurant says they have COVID-19 safe heated patio seating or to-go adult beverage kits. The menu will remain limited. Well, in news from across the Pacific Northwest, rangers at Mount Rainier National Park recovered the body of a hiker. On Saturday, 65-year-old Constane Markham from Eatonville fell from a steep slope below Risk Sacker Point. Yesterday, searchers found her in steep hazardous terrain. Her body was recovered using a helicopter. Schweitzer Ski Resort is stopping twilight skiing this MLK holiday weekend due to an overwhelming lack of compliance with mask policies and alleged verbal abuse of staff. Schweitzer CEO announced the change yesterday, saying that they've seen people refuse to wear masks in the rental shop, day lodge, and lift lines during twilight skiing hours. And staff are trying to get certain skiers to mask up, have been met with verbal abuse, they say. So 
Twilight skiing will be paused January 15th to 17th, although fireworks are still planned for Saturday the 16th. In the Tri-Cities, thankfully, no one was injured after a car drove into the Columbia River in Pasco, you see there. Pasco police posting these images on Twitter. They say the car was driven into the water by Harris Road and Shoreline Road and had to be pulled out just after 10 a.m. Officials say the driver was just cited and released. Alrighty, check this out at 5.05. President-elect Biden will not be the only one getting some fanfare when he enters the White House this month. His rescue dog, Major, is being honored with his own inauguration. The Delaware Humane Association and Pumpkin Pet Insurance are teaming up to host a virtual ceremony celebrating the nation's first shelter dog to step into the role. The inauguration is scheduled for January 17th, three days before Biden's own inauguration, and will be hosted by Jill Martin of NBC's Today. A $10 minimum donation is required for those who want to join the Zoom event, and all the proceeds will go to the Delaware Humane Association. Well, that's one happy pup. I know, I know. You know, no matter who you support, you can get behind this dog's you, politics. Yes, you, you see kind my of joke see there? what she did there. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's it's Monday, you guys. Let's take a quick break here in Good Morning North. West. But first, let's take that live look outside. And back to a lot of cloud cover early this morning and a little bit of some fog that has developed. But tracking several days of rain chances moving in this week, your full forecast, it's all coming up. Plus, why Amazon is investing billions of dollars in affordable housing to fix a problem the company helped create. Welcome back, everyone. Two billion dollars. That's how much Amazon says it's planning to invest in three U.S. cities over the next five years. The money will go towards affordable housing in Seattle, Nashville, and Arlington, Virginia. The company plans to have at least 5,000 employees in each of those cities. Amazon has been criticized in the past for driving up the cost of housing in areas where it's opened up larger operations. And this week's Consumer Electronics Show will be online only for the first time in its 54-year history. Exhibitors usually head to Las Vegas to show off the latest trends in tech. That's not possible this year, though, due to COVID-19, so they'll be in what CES calls its digital venue. This year's topics seem likely to focus on home automation, health, and 5G. The four-day event starts today. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, lawmakers are considering putting the 14th Amendment to use, which could mean some members of Congress could get kicked out. Welcome back. News from across America. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is asking Democrats for their input on using part of the 14th Amendment. Under the U.S. Constitution, it allows representatives to remove other members of Congress if they violated their oath by engaging in, quote, insurrection or rebellions or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Representative Cori Bush tweeted that she plans to introduce a resolution today to, quote, expel members of Congress for violating that amendment. She went on to say, quote, we can't truly have unity without accountability. House Democrats are pushing to remove President Trump from office. As early as this morning, they'll introduce a resolution that would call on Vice President Mike Pence and the president's cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment. That would force President Trump from office and make Pence the temporary president. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Pence will have 24 hours to respond before they move forward with impeachment. If the resolution doesn't pass by unanimous consent, then the measure will be brought to the floor for a full vote on Tuesday. To invoke the 25th Amendment, Pence would need a majority of the cabinet to agree Trump is unfit for office. And with less than two weeks before Inauguration Day, President-elect Joe Biden is introducing two key nominees for his economic and jobs team. Biden introduced Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo for Commerce Secretary and Boston Mayor Marty Walsh for Labor Secretary. The president-elect touted the diversity and historic firsts in his cabinet and said he fulfilled his promise of having a cabinet that looks like America. The mission of the Commerce Department is a very simple one, to help spur good paying jobs, to empower entrepreneurs to innovate and grow, to come together with working families and American businesses to create new opportunities for all of us. 
now we have the opportunity to put power back in the hands of working people all across this country. And that is a good thing for our economy and for our country. Biden also said this will be the first cabinet ever that's evenly composed with as many women as men. All nominees require Senate confirmation. The total number of people arrested in connection with the Capitol riot so far is 83. That's according to data analysis from CNN. One of the latest people to face charges is an Arizona man who was seen carrying a spear on Wednesday. He faces one count of entering or remaining in a restricted building and one count of violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Florida resident Adam Johnson faces those same charges plus one count of theft of government property. He was seen removing the House Speaker's podium. Law enforcement officials are reviewing social media to find more suspects and are asking the public to help identify those involved. More than 100,000 Texans have been without power after a massive snowstorm. PowerOutage.us says the losses are mainly in the eastern part of the state. Austin Energy says most issues are due to snow pushing tree limbs into power lines. And meteorologists say some parts of Texas got eight inches of accumulation. Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama are in the path of the snowstorm now. And the National Weather Service has a winter storm warning in effect until this morning. Now, CapKview First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. And back here locally, while we have some active weather that's going to be pushing in, temperatures overall will be above average. So no snowfall in the forecast. We have several days here with, with some rain chances essentially moving in. Even back through the Cascades looking at a little bit of some rainfall. Uh, so there's going to be a little flooding concern there as well. So downtown Yakima this morning overall just mostly cloudy. We have some fog that has developed early this morning. So our visibility coming down just a bit. Tri-Cities at 2 miles. Close to 10 for Walla Walla and Pendleton. But a really reduced visibility through the eastern slopes of the Cascades. Cleelum this morning less than a half mile. In Ellensburg, you're down to about one mile as well this morning. Temperatures early this morning have been, for the most part, above freezing. So we're at 34 Tri-Cities, 38 in Pendleton. We are down to 31, though, in Hermiston this morning with 38 for Yakima. And Toppenish, good morning to you. You're at 37 degrees. So as we switch over to the winds, our winds today will be fairly light, but we will see the winds changing up, turning breezy for the next couple of days. So for Tuesday and Wednesday, it will be breezy as this next system starts to push in. But the majority of the day today, we're going to stay mostly cloudy. We're starting off on the radar and satellite this morning, a lot of clouds, but this is our next system that's going to bring us a lot of soggy weather to our area locally. Um, that's going to start as early as tonight and uh, continue on and off Tuesday, at least in the early part of the day on Wednesday. So here's future cast. Again, through the majority of the day today, I think the rain chances will be staying mainly just up to our north. Cleelum, Ellensburg, Moses Lake, that rain uh, is expected through the eastern slopes and even through the cast so those higher peaks expecting some rainfall as well. But notice just after about 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, the rainfall is expected to move on in. We'll continue to have the wet weather overnight. A soggy start for your Tuesday morning. There's a look at 8 o'clock. We'll still have some spotty rain showers by lunchtime into your Tuesday afternoon. And then we'll get another shot of some pretty steady rainfall Tuesday night at 10 o'clock before a lot of this will start to come to an end. There's a look at 4 a.m. Wednesday morning. I think by uh, later in the day Wednesday, especially by Wednesday afternoon that sunshine's going to be back but it's certainly going to turn breezy some of our wind gusts on Wednesday could be between 30 to 35 miles per hour really once we start to dry things out so highs out there for today we are expecting 43 for Toppenish into Yakima uh, 44 in the Tri-Cities with 43 in Prosser 43 as well for Connell. A little bit warmer there for Walla Walla at 46, mid 40s for Dayton. As we switch over to tonight's forecast, those rain showers moving in, temperatures overnight dipping down into the mid to upper 30s. So there's your seven day forecast. We'll have a few showers lingering into early Wednesday and then starting to dry out, although temperatures will be going back down. So from 54 Wednesday, 47 on Thursday, pretty quiet for the upcoming weekend with those highs back in the low 40s. And your seven day for Yakima, breezy for Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday up to 50 degrees as we dry out and then back to some sunshine Thursday with a high of 44. We'll be right back with much more after the break.
Welcome back. In your entertainment news, Mean Girls is one more Broadway show that has fallen prey to the pandemic. The Tony-nominated musical, based on a 2004 film written by Tina Fey, made the announcement on its Twitter page saying the cast and crew played 833 performances at the August Wilson Theater, and we loved each and every one. Broadway has been hard hit during the COVID crisis, and theaters have remained dark since March. Mean Girls plans to resume its national tour this summer, and there is a movie adaptation of the Broadway version to come as well. Well, Taylor Swift dropped two new songs last week, one titled It's Time to Go, but it looks like the singer is not taking her own advice when it comes to the Billboard charts. Swift's latest album, Evermore, returned to number one on the Billboard 200 chart for a third non-consecutive week giving her a total of 51 weeks at number one across all eight of her chart-topping albums. That means the pop star has now tied Michael Jackson for the fourth most weeks at number one on the charts. The Beatles hold the first place title with a record 132 weeks, followed by Elvis Presley with 67 and Garth Brooks coming in third with 52 weeks at the top of the Billboard 200. All right, well, what if drones had a sense of smell? That's what some researchers have been working to find out. This is called the smellicopter, Kristen. <laughs> and basically, researchers just slapped a moth antenna on the drone to give it a sense of smell. This allows the drone to sniff out the source of a scent and navigate to it. The long-term goal is that they can one day sniff out objects like bombs. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Um, so a moth antenna. Mm -hmm. I need to know mm -hmm. a little bit more about that. Moth how. antennas have super keen senses okay. of smell. So they're able to attach that to the drone. Well, there you go. What will they think of next? I know. Okay. Well, coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, the curtain came down hard on the Seattle Seahawks 2020 season. We'll bring you the highlights from this weekend's playoff game. Plus, the Tri-Cities have a new football team to cheer for, and they just held their first tryouts. And at 526, as we give you that live look in downtown Yakima, we are looking at several days here of rain chances moving in. Your work week forecast, it's all coming up. Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, as lawmakers prepare to meet for the 2021 legislative session in Washington, troopers and the National Guard are keeping watch. And we are getting ready for another round of some active weather to move into the Pacific Northwest. What that means for us locally, I'll have that forecast. It's all coming up. From KPQ Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest. Thanks for kicking off the second work week of 2020 with us. I'm Monica Petrozelli checking in now with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Kristen, a, a wet week ahead? Yes, we have some rain chances that will be spilling in. This morning, though, if you're looking to head out the door, it is a dry start. But we have a little bit of some fog that has developed in spots. So just a heads up there. Live look right now from Richland's Columbia Point. This view, not too bad. Pretty dark out there at this hour. Sunrise taking place right around 730 uh, early this morning. So still a couple more hours left um, before that sun starts to come up this morning. Not expecting a whole lot of sunshine today. Uh, as far as visibilities go right now, Hermiston, you're down about two miles. Five in the Tri-Cities, so starting to see some improvement uh, from less than about a half mile about an hour ago, and then reduced visibility there for Cleella as you're down about a half mile early this morning as well. Temperatures, 34 in the Tri-Cities, 38 in Yakima, and then down to 32 for Walla Walla, and there's all the cloud cover this morning. Most of our rain chances will be staying just up to our north and then high temperature today of 44 degrees. So again, tracking that wet weather that's going to be spilling in over the next 24 hours. I'll have a look at how long it's expected to last, Monica. It's all coming up. Thank you, Kristen. A crime alert. An 18-year-old in Kennewick was shot during a robbery this weekend. That's according to police who said he was meeting up with a couple guys who got into his car and demanded that he hand over his personal belongings. When the victim refused, one of the suspects got out of the car and fired shots through the window, hitting the victim. If you have any tips about this crime, you're asked to call Kennewick police. In Oregon, what began as a rally quickly escalated to violence. It started at the 
the federal courthouse in Eugene around noon Saturday. Six people were fighting in the middle of 8th and Mill, and a stretcher actually was rolled out even at one point, and numerous Eugene PD and SWAT units arrived on scene. Police declared it a riot and got the group to disperse. Protesters said they were demanding transparency in the 2020 election. I'm just concerned for our, for our rights. You know, I feel they're being taken away. They're not listening to us. I don't care what the truth is. I want the truth. I want the truth about everything that's been happening to our country. Three people were arrested for disorderly conduct. Police say no tear gas or force was needed, but they did feel it was a dangerous situation. Several dozen protesters were gathered yesterday afternoon outside Washington State's Capitol building, which is surrounded by temporary fencing and National Guard members right now. This comes after last week's assault on the U.S. Capitol and the breaching of the gates at Governor Inslee's mansion in Olympia. Washington State Patrol says that when and the governor ordered the fencing to go up and activated the National Guard. They say the increased security is necessary. Where is that line where it goes from being security focused and reasonable to being overdone in a fortress? We think that this, especially since it's temporary, these fences are, are temporary. We think these are reasonable security uh, precautions. Some protesters were there to oppose vaccines, others were supporters of President Trump, and some were there to object to the closure of the building to the public during the upcoming legislative session. Yesterday's event was small and peaceful, with many people leaving the area by 3 p.m. Today, the Washington legislature is set to convene for the first time in person in nearly a year. Lawmakers are meeting in person largely to adopt rules that will allow them to meet virtually during the rest of the session. After that, in the Senate, regular floor votes will be conducted in a hybrid format with a mix of senators present in the chamber and others participating remotely. The House has decided to do the rest of its work remotely. Lawmakers' agenda includes dealing with pressing issues related to the pandemic, such as support for struggling businesses and renters and police reform. Here in the Tri-Cities, a few dozen people rallied in Pasco on Sunday to stand against fascism. People held signs along 20th Street near Albertsons as cars drove by. The rally was organized by members of the community and the Labor Against Fascism Coalition. We're out here trying to bring awareness to the community that we need to organize ourselves as a community to prevent the rise of fascism in our community and the United States. Labor Against Fascism group of Eastern Washington and Oregon has held several rallies over the past few months. The U.S. Capitol Police held a ceremony yesterday afternoon to honor the U.S. Capitol Police officer slain in Wednesday's riot. Flags were lowered to half-staff yesterday in honor of Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from injuries sustained at the riot. And another officer, former police chief Terrence Gaynor, also responded to the riot, died by suicide on Saturday. In Oregon, Governor Kate Brown ordered all flags at public institutions to be flown at half-staff until sunset on Wednesday. And the U.S. Capitol Police announced Chief Yoganada Pittman will be the department's new acting chief. Pittman is succeeding former Chief Stephen Sund, who stepped down following Wednesday's insurrection on Capitol Hill. She'll be the first woman to serve in that position. According to USCP's website, Pittman led the efforts to provide the security footprint for the 2013 presidential inauguration. Pittman is a 1999 graduate of Morgan State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology. In sports news, the Seahawks season came to an end Saturday after falling short of the Los Angeles Rams 30-20. to The Rams scored in the first quarter and never looked back. Russell Wilson threw a pick six in the second quarter but rebounded well with a 51-yard touchdown reception to DK Metcalf. Unfortunately, the Hawks couldn't stop the Rams offense in the second half. Seattle ends the season with a 12-5 record. And the Tri-Cities new arena football team held their first tryouts on Sunday. Dozens of players ran through drills at Southridge Sports Complex in Kennewick. Cold weather wasn't stopping them from a chance at playing professional football. One player said it's good to be back. It's good to get out and get around some other football players. You know, like I said, during the pandemic, it's been a little crazy. So it's, it's a good time to come out here and communicate. 
The Rush play in the American West Football Conference with teams out of Wenatchee and Yakima, as well as some in Idaho and Oregon. More information about the Rush can be found on their website. All right, you check this out at 536. Veterinarians are caring for the first white tiger born in captivity in Nicaragua. The AVA, who is just nine days old, was oh rejected goodness. by its mother at the National Zoo of Nicaragua after she was unable to produce milk. To keep the baby nourished, vets fed nieve, which means snow in Spanish, every three hours. The cub weighed less than two pounds of birth, but could grow to weigh over 400 pounds. <laughs> Nieve's parents are Bengal tigers with yellow fur and black stripes. Vets say Nieve inherited the white fur from its maternal grandfather, which is uncommon. The white fur is the result of genetic crosses that cause a loss of yellow and orange color. Oh my gosh, so adorable though. So cute and so tiny. It's hard to believe that little guy's gonna be I 400 know, pounds. I know, it's so big so fast. Mm-hmm, they grow up fast. Mm -hmm. All right, it's now time to raise the flag here in Good Morning Northwest with the Pledge of Allegiance. With schools pretty much closed, we still honor the flag each morning. So please send a photo or video of your child doing the Pledge of Allegiance to pledge at capkbu.com and we'll share it with viewers. At Archibalds, we believe it's important to keep the traditions that have made our country great. We're proud to support Raise the Flag. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest at 540. A report shows the United States lost 140,000 jobs last month. It's a sign the economic recovery is taking a step backward. Adding up gains and losses for women, those workers took a cumulative hit of 156,000 jobs. But the same math for men results in a cumulative gain of 16,000 jobs. Black and Latina women are struggling the most since they disproportionately tend to work in industries the pandemic is crippling most. Investors seem hopeful Democrats can turn around the economy with stimulus and employment plans. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, authorities have found the crash site of a Boeing 737-500 a day after the aircraft plummeted into the ocean with 62 people on board. Now, Cap gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Pretty quiet weekend overall, mainly dry, a lot of cloud cover yesterday. Uh, but we are looking at more active weather to move into the Pacific Northwest. Some pretty heavy rainfall is expected across Washington and Oregon, uh, mainly as we head into the day on Tuesday. Now, we have some wet weather that's already starting to slide in the Pacific Northwest early this morning for Seattle and Portland. For us, though, locally, we will get that chance for some wet weather to develop later tonight and then on and off for your Tuesday. Now, because of all of the rain chances that are expected back through the Cascades, uh, there is a flood watch that's in in place. So the snow levels will be pretty high. Uh, they're expecting that rainfall on top of already the snow that they've been seeing the last couple of weeks. So that could lead to some creeks and streams on the rise. That'll start this evening through Wednesday evening. Again, the majority of the cascades under that flood watch. Uh, during that time frame. Here locally, we have a lot of cloud cover as we start off your morning with some fog that has popped up around the area. Uh, but as we give you a closer look here with Futurecast and time things out for the next couple of days, again, we will see these rain chances moving in. Now today, the best chance for some rain showers, mainly from uh, Yakima Valley and uh, areas up to our north from Ellensburg, Cleelum, and up towards Moses Lake. I think the majority of the Columbia Basin into the Tri-Cities will stay dry today, at least during uh, the daytime hours. But overnight tonight, just after about 8 o'clock, that wet weather starts to spill in. Uh, we'll have a soggy start to your, Wednesday, or to your Tuesday morning, so expect those on and off rain showers through lunchtime, and then still some spotty rain showers for your Tuesday afternoon. We'll get another blast of some wet weather in here by Tuesday night, so that steady rainfall will continue at least until early on Wednesday morning, and then we'll actually start to clear things out. We'll have some sunshine returning for your Wednesday afternoon, but as the sun returns, we're going to see those winds really picking up, so wind gusts on Wednesday afternoon. We're expecting between 30 to as much as 35 miles per hour, although at least Tuesday and Wednesday will be fairly mild. Now, speaking of winds early this morning, not too bad. Most locations starting off fairly light. Uh, the exception around Dayton this morning, you're already up, you are already up to about a 14 mile per hour wind. Now, we have the visibility uh, reduced just a little bit this morning. Tri-Cities down to 5, 1 in Hermiston, and especially there along the eastern slopes of the Cascades. Cleelum, you're less than about a half mile early this morning. 
morning. And our temperatures were at 34 in the Tri-Cities, right at that freezing mark for Walla Walla, and then 38 over in Yakima. So we are expecting numbers in the low 40s for Toppenish into Yakima. Tri-Cities today up to about 44 with 43 degrees in Prosser, and then 46 for Walla Walla and Pendleton, mid 40s uh, today for Dayton. So we are expecting the rain showers to develop overnight tonight as those temperatures fall through the mid to upper 30s. So there's your seven day forecast on and off rain chances tomorrow. Warm is down Wednesday up to 54 and then we'll have some sunshine returning by the end of the work week. Temperatures starting to drop low 40s over the upcoming weekend and your seven day for Yakima. It's going to be breezy but near 50 degrees on Wednesday and then back to mostly sunny sky Thursday with a high of 44. Thank you, Kristen. In news from around the world, Indonesia's Navy search team has located the wreckage from a plane that crashed shortly after takeoff from Jakarta, Indonesia. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, the Boeing 737-500 dropped 10,000 feet in less than one minute before disappearing from the radar Saturday. It was carrying 50 passengers, 43 adults and seven children, as well as 12 crew members. Pope Francis's personal doctor has died of complications from COVID-19. That's according to the Vatican's newspaper. The announcement came Saturday. 78-year-old Fabrizio Sacorzi was hospitalized in Rome on December 26, according to the Italian Bishops Conference newspaper. Pope Francis first tapped Sarkozy to be his personal doctor in 2015. It's not clear when he was last in contact with the Pope. The Vatican will begin COVID-19 vaccinations next week and the Pope will be in line to get the shot. The total number of people arrested in connection with the Capitol riot so far is 83. That's according to data analysis from CNN. One of the latest people to face charges is an Arizona man who was seen carrying a spear Wednesday. He faces one count of entering or remaining in a restricted building and one count of violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Florida resident Adam Johnson faces those same charges plus one count of theft of government property. He was seen removing the House Speaker's podium. Law enforcement officials are reviewing social media to find more suspects and are asking the public to help identify those involved. And an apparent Proud Boys member appears to have threatened people in D.C. before allegedly participating in the Capitol riot. This video from November shows what seems to be Joshua Pruitt's induction into the Proud Boys. Now he's charged with unlawfully entering or remaining in a restricted building in relation to Wednesday's events. In a separate video on his parlor account, he appears to respond to the arrest of the Proud Boys leader in D.C. Monday. Pruitt says the action, quote, started a war and that he'd have the heads of those he deemed responsible. Even after being arrested, Pruitt posted on Parler, quote, the fight isn't over. Well, it's getting harder for President Trump supporters to communicate on that app Parler. Apple's removing the app from its store, saying it's home to violent threats and calls for legal activity. The iPhone maker says it warned Parler but didn't see a, quote, adequate response. Google has also removed Parler from its Play Store, and Amazon is removing it from its cloud hosting service. Right now, President Trump himself is locked out of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitch. When we come back on Good Morning Northwest, the rollout of the COVID vaccine appears to have hit another snag. More on why some doses are being thrown away. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Shortly after the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine, a snag appears. Some doses are expiring and being thrown away before they can be given to people in high priority groups. John Lawrence reports. More than 22 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been distributed to hospitals and pharmacies nationwide so far, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Relax your arm to your side, don't tense up. But the CDC says fewer than 7 million people have received the first dose. The issue is not the supply of the vaccine. The issue is not being able to get enough people injected with the vaccine. Some hospitals are forced to throw away vaccines that quickly expired once they were taken out of cold storage. This is such a precious resource and really this wastage should not be tolerated at all. Health experts say there may be a lag in vaccine reporting, 
But some actions can be taken to improve the process. If there are, let's say, three doses in a vial that are not used, that the pharmacists or nurses should be allowed to give that to whoever is around um, instead of wasting it. This comes as more than 2.2 million new COVID-19 cases and about 27,000 deaths were reported in the U.S. during the first 10 days of 2021, according to Johns Hopkins University. We have a lot more that we need to do because right now across the country, the freezers are filling up with this vaccine and it's not where we need it. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And the former commissioner of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said that the U.S. vaccine strategy isn't working and that there needs to be a reset. He said the vaccine needs to get out more quickly to stop the spread of the new coronavirus variants. But the CDC says no evidence indicates that the U.S. has a homegrown coronavirus variant that's fueling a surge. According to reports, the White House Coronavirus Task Force says such a variant might exist. That's in addition to the one that's from the United Kingdom. The CDC says variants are likely evolving around the world and one could arise here. It just has no evidence that that has happened yet. When President-elect Joe Biden takes office, his team has pledged to release all the coronavirus vaccine doses the government has. And that has some worried that patients might not get their second dose when they should. To help ease concerns, Moderna says its vaccine can be administered between 21 and 42 days after the first dose. In the clinical trials, the second dose was given 28 days after the first. Moderna hasn't said whether the company will be able to meet the demand for the second doses if the Biden administration distributes all the vaccines at once. The company spokesperson says it plans to deliver 100 million doses by the end of the first quarter. And at 557, let's get you over to that close to home forecast today. A lot of clouds this morning and some fog that has popped up. You can see those uh, temperatures by later on this afternoon, close to right around average. So 44 uh, for Richland, 45 degrees in Burbank, Basin City this afternoon, up to about 43 degrees. Mainly dry during the daytime before wet weather spills in later tonight. And also plenty of cloud cover there along the foothills of the Blues. Uh, Walla Walla and Milton Freewater at 46. Boardman today at 44. Pilot Rock jumping up to about 46 degrees. We're expecting some wet weather around the Yakima Valley by uh, later on this afternoon with that mostly cloudy sky. Union Gap 41, that cheese at 39 and Sela today up to about 41 degrees and just going to be a soggy day overall. Should be mainly dry this morning and then the rain showers develop later this morning into the afternoon with 39 Ellensburg and Vantage up to 41. Thank you, Kristen. Well, now to some of the positive stories coming out of the pandemic. They're veterans, in-laws, and friends for more than 70 years. And now two men in New Hampshire can add vaccination partners to that list. Edward Wilson and William Wentworth have been through a lot of life's turning points together. They've been friends since 1949. Both served our country. Now in their 80s, they're staying connected even through the pandemic and they're excited to get the COVID-19 vaccine together through the Manchester VA. I still work at the library and it's been difficult because I haven't been able to do that. I like to keep active and you can't in a situation like this. So just being able to move about will be, I think, the blessing that we're looking for. They're now among the 200 veterans the Manchester VA has vaccinated so far. And these old friends might be lucky they live in New Hampshire. Officials there say the state is having one of the fastest vaccine rollouts in the country. But what a lot of this friendship no, that you know, they've done together. And the stories that mm -hmm. they could tell mm -hmm. and uh, good for them. They're going to overcome this pandemic together.